everyone. My name is William Stewart. I'm an instructor here at Eastern Florida State College, the Melbourne campus. And um, today I'd like to share with you a few tips that I've learned over the past few years for using the whiteboard as an instructional tool. For, for drawing pictures on the whiteboard in front of a class. Um, and, and hopefully these tips help you out. They've um, helped out my lectures quite a bit. And as you already, already know, that the whiteboard can be a great way to engage the class. It can be a fun way to teach. And hopefully these tips can um, be things that you incorporate in your own lectures uh, moving forward. Okay, So um, first thing that I found is that having a good marker is probably one of the most important parts of an effective whiteboard lecture. So I really like to use Expo markers. These unfortunately are the most expensive, but they seem to work uh, better than some of the more generic counterparts or generic options. So Expo markers work well, and I think it's great to have not only fresh Expo markers, but a lot of different colors. Having different colors allows you to highlight certain areas of your illustration and it really allows you to distinguish um, between different structures. Okay. Now um, another kind of uh, tip that I've learned, the second tip, is to come up with a plan about what you're, you would like to share with the class using the whiteboard. Um, just like any other talk, you know, if I go in, or any other lecture, if I go in without a good idea of what I'm going to talk about in that lecture, it tends to not be as organized and it just doesn't um, convey the information nearly as effectively. So coming up with a plan of what you would like the whiteboard to look like when you're finished, I found it is really important. And to do this, this might seem counterintuitive, but yellow is a great way to make a plan because you can use yellow to make a guide or a sketch of what you're gonna put on the whiteboard before you do this. So I think that yellow is probably the most important color to use when, when teaching off the whiteboard. Okay, um, I know it, I'll start with a guide, you know, and you, this can be a simple sketch. So what I'd like to do today for this kind of tutorial or workshop is I'm going to make a demonstration of what a, the, the whiteboard kind of looks like after I would give a lecture on the kidney. So I teach a lot of anatomy and physiology. And I've chosen to use the kidney as an example because the kidney basically exists as some basic shapes. And the precise form of these shapes really don't affect the outcome of how well good the kidney looks, okay? So if you can draw some basic shapes like ovals and circles and triangles, you can draw a kidney really well. And I'm gonna do two demonstrations. The first demonstration, I'm gonna follow these tips that I'm gonna share with you. And then the second one, at the same time, I'm gonna ignore these tips. So you're gonna see one really bad version of a whiteboard lecture, and then hopefully one um, better version, okay? So coming up with a plan and using yellow is a really important part of it. For this lecture, it'd be kind of nice to draw out kind of um, a person's torso here, and kind of their body, so that you could sh I could show the class exactly where the kidneys are in the abdomen. And then it'd be nice if we kind of zoomed in and drew a larger picture of the kidneys so we could see what's inside, okay? So using the guide, um, it'd be kind of nice to draw a person here. Um, for the head, a nice guide for the head it, are just some ovals like this. And I've found that making kind of these repeated circles is better than taking your time making one perfect oval because, you know, the class can't see this anymore. Now when I start doing this in front of a live class, you'll always get somebody raising their hand and they'll say, you know, I can't see yellow. And you just politely tell them that it's not for them, this is a guide for you. Okay, so a person can be kind of sketched out as an oval for the head, an oval for the neck. This oval represents the chest, maybe a couple ovals here to represent the, the shoulders. Bottom of the rib cage is right there, and then we'll have the pelvis, which is about right here. Okay, now that we have this little sketch for the person, I'm also going to draw out a much larger illustration of the kidney, and that can go right about here. Okay, so this would be like a very large oval that represents the kidney that we'll zoom in on. 
Now to fill this in, I'll just take another color, you know, so I'm gonna think I'm gonna use brown to show the outline of this person's torso. Brown isn't the darkest color, like it's not going to pop as much as black, but that's okay because we just need a silhouette of someone to show where the kidneys exist. Now for the head, the head can be a very dangerous thing to draw in front of a class because it's easy to mess up and draw a head that doesn't look that great. Um, I would almost stress that the third tip that I'm going to share with you is really important here and that's that less is more. We don't need to draw a super detailed face here because we're talking about the kidney. It doesn't really matter what this person's face looks like. So I'm going to keep things super simple and I'm just going to focus on the silhouette of this person's kind of face and jaw. We'll just follow the outline that we've done already, give this guy an ear, two ears right there, and that pretty much accomplishes what we're trying to show. You could almost leave his face blank and that really doesn't matter. We can see that it's a head. All right, we'll give this guy a neck, okay? We could get a little bit more into detail by drawing the shoulders like this, torso, the chest is gonna be like that, all right? And kind of the side of the rib cage kind of goes in like this, like this and then down to the pelvis like that with the legs coming like this. Draw the belly button, which is about right here, and then we can have the arms extend downwards like that. And we're, that's about as much detail as we'll need. So that's the torso, and you really don't even need to go into that much detail, okay? You could, if I kind of did another version over here, you could draw the chest, right, the head, shoulders, pelvis, and you could go even more simply with the bottom of the chin here, top of the head, ears on either side, neck, and then you just bring it down like this. Chest goes down like this, and that's plenty sufficient to show what we're trying to show, okay? Now, if you wanted to put in a face, you could, um, Again, I would stress that less is more. We don't really need a face in this situation, but if you wanted to put in a face, you could put in a face that kind of um, looks like this. A guide for here is that to know, if you want to know where the eyes go, just draw a horizontal line that's halfway between the top of the head and the bottom of the chin. That's going to be about right here. That's where the eyes would go. Then you draw another line that's halfway between this line and the bottom of the chin, right about there. That's where the bottom of the nose goes. And the mouth goes slightly below that. Now again, less is more. So for the eyes, I would just draw two little arcs, maybe with a pupil right there in the middle. For the nose, maybe just draw a little line like that. And then for the mouth, another horizontal line. And that accomplishes everything that you kind of need to accomplish. Now, if I were to ignore all of these tips, not use a plan, not use multiple colors, and ignore the, the um, approach of less is more, I might come over here, this is the bad version of this drawing, and let's say I'm gonna start out with some really weird, super detailed head, okay? So we'll draw a bunch of eyes, maybe this weird looking nose, maybe really detailed, you know, we don't need to do this much detail, but I'm going to. Okay, so now we have this, I mean his chin is over here, uh, it comes up like this. Already I've been able, they even give this guy some hair or something. Already now I've drawn this very distracting, kind of weird looking face, which doesn't help with the lecture that you're trying to give. I mean, this is just a weird looking face. And again, I don't have a guide, let's draw his neck, maybe his torso. Already he's, you might notice that he's uneven because I don't have a guide. Arms go down like this. And now you have something that's really just gonna distract the class. Um, okay, good, so that's the bad version of this. Now, um, if we wanted to show where the kidneys are, I'm gonna grab paint to represent the kidneys. And the kidneys are about right here on the posterior wall of the abdominal cavity right underneath the 11th and 12th ribs. So we're gonna do a kidney right here and a kidney right here. And now if I was really, what I should have done is drawn a little yellow guide to represent the location of the kidneys, okay? That would help me out even better because now I can just follow that line. And what I'll do is I'll kind of color in these kidneys 
just to highlight their position even more, okay? Now, I'm not too worried about um, giving a full lecture right now about the kidneys, but in a nutshell, these are organs that adjust our body fluids to make sure that our blood is just right, okay? So these large kidneys, we have two of them, right, uh, left kidney, right kidney, they are going to be connected to two large arteries. These are the renal arteries, okay? The renal arteries are gonna be an extension of the abdominal aorta, which comes down like this. You're gonna have a renal artery that goes over here, renal artery that comes over here, and that gives blood to the kidneys. Coming out of the kidneys, you're gonna have the very large renal vein. I'll draw that in blue. So you'll have a renal vein that comes out of here, renal vein that comes out of there, and that is going to dump blood into the inferior vena cava, which is returning blood to the heart, okay? Now coming out of these kidneys, that's where we'll have our final kind of tube, and this final tube is called the ureter. Um, I will draw this ureter in orange, okay? So this ureter is gonna be a tube that emerges from the kidneys and drains fluid to the bladder, which is now urine. And the bladder hangs out in the, uh, in the pelvic cavity right about there. And we've connected all of our parts. Now when it comes to labeling, this is important. I found that picking one color for labeling um, is, is really important, okay? So in this case, we haven't used black. So black would be a really, oh, let me back up. I think I'm gonna outline these structures in black. So I'm gonna use green as a label, okay? So we're gonna use green as a label and I'm gonna keep this consistent throughout the lecture. So this is obviously the head, you can label it whatever you like. You've got the kidney here, okay? You've got the ureter, the bladder, and so forth. But by keeping this one color, it really allows, um, it doesn't uh, confuse the, the class with what the labels are and what the structures are. Another thing that you could do to help clarify some of these structures is just by outlining the structures. You don't have to do this, but by outlining the kidney in black, it might help the structure pop even more. You could also outline the different vessels that come in, that come in like this and like that up, and I'll continue with the artery that goes down and down, and that just might help um, kind of highlight some of these structures. Continue with this, highlight the, the bladder, and this gives us a good idea of, of what's involved with the urinary system. Now if we go back over to the bad version of this drawing, I'm not going to use different colors. I'm not going to continue not using a plan. I'm going to draw the right kidney draw or the left kidney, draw the right kidney. We've got the renal artery feeding to each kidney. We've also got the renal vein that comes here, connects with the inferior vena cava. So we've got the renal artery, renal vein. Oh, and then we need to draw the ureters, which come down here to the bladder like that. We've got the bladder here, about right there. I guess that's his pelvis. That's okay. We can kind of extend this down like that. Maybe those will be the his legs, all right. Oh, and now we need to label things. So let's label the kidney, label the ureter, label the bladder. And you can see that because I only used one color and the same color for labeling and all the structures, it's not nearly as clear as this version of it here. So really utilizing those different colors are gonna be um, important for, for clarifying what we're talking about here, okay? All right, good. Now, the next kind of uh, tip that I'd like to, to mention is to use the whole board, right? And you don't erase anything that you put up because you'll notice that the class might want to kind of copy down and um, they, they want to you know, take pictures of, of your board at the end of the class and you don't want to erase any content that might be valuable, okay? So um, just keeping everything up on the board and um, not erasing it is gonna be really useful for the class. And in addition, you don't want to only utilize a corner of the board, really using a, making a plan with yellow to utilize as much of the board space as possible is gonna be helpful, okay? 
So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on this right kidney. I'm going to draw it much larger over here. The kidney, if you look inside of it, so if you did a section through it, you'll notice that the kidney consists of two different regions. You've got an outer region, which is called the cortex, and an inner region called the medulla. I'm not going to get too detailed into the structure or into the function of all these structures, but inside the medulla, um, you'll have these unique shapes of tissue. Right? They look like little triangles, which is what I'm drawing right here. In 3D, these structures look like pyramids, and that's their name. They're called renal pyramids, and these are structures where urine effectively is formed, and it trickles down the pyramid toward the center of the kidney. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color in these structures, I think I'm gonna use brown here, to really show the difference between the renal pyramids and the rest of the tissue here. And so I'm just gonna kind of loosely color these in like this, all right, like this, like this, and like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and outline each one of these little renal pyramids. And what these pyramids do is urine's kind of generated up here at the top of the pyramid, right at the border of the cortex. Urine trickles down here, and then you're gonna have a series of tubes that collect this urine, and these tubes are called calyces. I'll label that here in a second. The tubes converge into larger and larger tubes eventually until they form the ureter that leaves the, the kidney altogether. So here I'm just gonna outline each pyramid. You'll notice that each pyramid kind of drains its contents into a series of tubes that drains, collects that urine. These are like just very basic shapes. All of these tubes come together and then form a larger tube that exits the kidney, okay? Now, for labeling, I'm gonna keep with the same color here. This is a pyramid. All right. This smaller tube that drains urine from the pyramid, that's called the calyx. All right. This is the renal pelvis. And then this large tube is called the ureter. Now's a good time to kind of fill in the rest of the kidney or the rest of the periphery of the kidney. Okay, so the outer kind of edge of the kidney looks like this. I'm just gonna follow the guy that I've already drawn. He kind of looks like that. And this lets us see that all of this area right here, this is all cortex, which means that all of this is medulla. Now, the only other things that we really need to draw here are the systems of arteries within the kidney. You're going to have your large renal artery that enters in right about here. Once this renal artery enters into the kidney, he splits up into some smaller segmental arteries, which break up into interlobal arteries, which make their way towards the cortex between these pyramids. Those divide up into arcuate arteries. And finally, the smallest arteries are going to be these cortical radial arteries. Now, I'm not going to label all of those different arterial structures, but real quick, I'm just going to draw a series of arteries that make their way to the cortex in this fashion. All right, they make their way out here, make their way out here. So this one renal artery is splitting up and making its way out to the cortex. And once it gets out to the cortex, this forms a series of small of these cortical radiate arteries, which make their way through the cortex all around the kidney. I'll try to speed this up. Okay. Then you're going to have a very similar network of veins, which follow a, a nearly identical um, arrangement. You're going to have the large renal vein, which is going to be located here. This renal vein is going to be connected to another series of veins, which mimic the pattern of the, of the renal arteries. You're going to have some small veins out here. These smaller veins converge into larger and larger and larger veins, which are ultimately going to merge with that renal, um, the large renal vein here. So you have some veins that merge here. They collect together like this. Larger and larger veins, which ultimately are going to merge and connect with this large renal vein. Okay, keep going all the way around. You guys get the idea. Okay, now. 
This is a pretty complicated structure, but because I used these different colors, it's at least somewhat possible to distinguish what's going on here. If I were to ignore these tips, and again, I'm gonna draw the bigger version of the kidney over here, I'm not gonna have a guide, and I'm gonna to try to draw like a very precise oval using a much more slower stroke. Again, another tip is I think that drawing with a more faster kind of stroke using your whole arm is nice because it creates a smooth line as opposed to, to something that looks like this. We need to draw our pyramids, but I don't really have a guide of where they go, so I'm just gonna wing it like this. Here's the pyramids. They come together to form the ureter right here. Okay, maybe I should color these in like that. All right, oh, already it's not looking too good. What about the artery? The renal arteries can come out here, then you can go out there. You're gonna have a series of small arteries that are distributed all throughout the cortex. Oh, and then we need to draw the renal vein. Renal vein comes here and follows a very similar pattern. Just comes out here, here, all through here. Now we need to label some stuff. Here's the pyramid. Oh man, the cortex is right here. We've got the ureter. Oh man, and already this looks like a mess. So hopefully you can see the differences between these two versions. Um, again, the five tips that I went over, use good markers, lots of colors, come up with a plan, use yellow, use the whole board and don't erase, and then less is more. So hopefully this helps you out. Um, and then have fun on the whiteboard. Thank you.